Welcome Bronco Nation and welcome Mountain West fans to my preview of the Mountain West Championship game featuring Boise State versus Fresno State. 9-3 Boise State Broncos facing off against the 8-4 Fresno State Bulldogs. Boise State at home in this one. This game will be Saturday, December 3rd, 2 p.m. Mountain Central Time on Fox. Boise State favored in this game, 69.2% chance of winning and given a three-point uh, spread here by Vegas. Boise State favored this game by three points, which I do find surprising. We'll talk about that here in a second, but we're going to go through the journey here real quick overall for what these two teams did to get to this championship. A little bit of a surprise that both teams are here, actually, considering how the first third of their seasons went. Then we'll talk about the series history real quick, specifically focusing on the previous championship matchups between these two teams. We'll look at key players for both programs, keys to the game for Boise State, and then we'll give a summary overall here for this game and a score prediction at the end. So watch all the way to the end. It's going to be a great video. You'll notice I'm wearing a new shirt here. This is new Bronco Blameyer merch. Link in the description. Great uh, Christmas presents. Great just all-around Boise State fan here. Make sure that you you go look that up in the description. 15% from the proceeds will go to supporting the Boise State BAA. So make sure that you stick around all the way to the end so we get some score predictions in here. And I want to hear from you on what you think this game is going to go. This is a great matchup between two teams that are predominantly throughout the years at the top of this conference. I've met several times, like I've said before, in the championship games previously. But what did these two teams do to get here this year? Well, Boise State it was a rough start to the year. 2-2 two and two to start the year. Losses to Oregon State, which, you know, okay, good Pac-12 team. They just beat Oregon. You know, they're going to finish up in the top 20 this year. But then they lost to UTEP. That was an unacceptable loss. It turned into some major changes for this program. Notably, of course, Boise State's offense coordinator, Tim Plough, getting the boot, headed out the door. Dirk Cutter, elevated, former Boise State head coach, former NFL coach, you know, one of the most talented offensive coordinators available in the college football game right now and he gets the head the nod to come out to the head job here as offensive coordinator and it turned Boise State around. Bachmeyer didn't like what he saw right there with where what the direction that Boise State was going and he decided to head for the door and that elevated Talon Green who has had an incredible year so far has done some amazing things for this program and allowed Boise State to come in and really actually find success this year, a large part, again, because of what Taylor Green has brought to this program. We'll talk about that when we get to our key players of the game. So, Boise State, 2-2, two and two, but they finished the season 7-1, and one, only lost a very close loss to BYU, but they finished undefeated in conference play, and they are headed to the Mountain West Championship game against all odds, especially seeing that last year they went 7-5. and five. This is a major turnaround for the Boise State Broncos. Fresno State, you thought Boise State started off bad. Fresno State started off the year 1-4. and four. Now, they had the excuse of losing their starting quarterback, Jake Hayner, early in the year, second game there, versus Oregon State. Um, but they lost one. They went 1-4, and four, a loss featured against UConn. That was a really bad loss for them. But Hayner returned. Boise, uh, Fresno State was able to weather the storm there. Their last loss to Boise State was... At home for Boise State. That was the last loss. Boise State put up over 300 yards rushing on them. And that was the last time that Fresno State lost. They have since gone 7-0. and And they are now headed into this Mountain West Championship game as an 8-4 and team. Like I said, haven't lost since that Boise State game. So that, there are a lot of things brewing in this matchup. When you talk about the rivalry nature. Obviously, Boise State winning the milk can this year. When you talk about it being a Mountain West Championship game to begin with. But then when also you look at what this game means to both of these programs. Especially Fresno state here who the last you know point to wipe the slate clean for the season and say the things have completely turned around would be getting the win against the team that beat them the last time they played and the first last team that they lost to both of these teams highly motivated to come in here and play these teams have met before quite a lot actually boy state and fresno state are a recognized rivalry they have a rivalry trophy boy state now 17-7 in that series after getting the win earlier this year in the regular season but they've also met several times in championship games this is going to be the fourth time that they've met in a mountain west championship game boise state taking the win in 2014 and 2017 Fresno State taking the win the last time these two teams met in a championship game in 2018. Now, this is also the fourth season that Boise State and Fresno State have ended up playing each other twice. So obviously, the three previous times we went to the championship game, they'd also played each other in the regular season. Now, in 17 and 18, the teams ended up swapping. So whichever team won the regular season they would end up losing in the championship game. So Boise State in 2017 lost in the regular season, won the championship. 2018, Fresno State does the same. Now, 2014, however, was the last time that Boise State was able to get the win in both the regular season 
and the championship game. It has been done before, but it's going to be definitely a tough one in this one because this is a different Fresno State team than what they faced when they faced Fresno State on the blue earlier this year. Let's talk about that when we get to key players. So talking about those key players here, we'll start off with Boise State. I did kind of hint and a little bit at what we're going to talk about with Fresno State, but we'll talk about here with Fred, Boise State to begin with. Quarterback Taylor Green, the Mountain West Freshman of the Year, what a season it has been for him. This was an incredible year here for Taylor Green. 1,731 yards passing, 12 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, has not thrown a pick in the last 5 games. Now, he has been close, has had some risky throws, but he's gotten better and better, less of those near picks each game. And I thought last game versus Utah State was his best passing game of the season, if, even, if statistically it wasn't. I thought he had a great game overall there. Also, though, a th clear threat in the running game, 432 yards rushing, 8 touchdowns, Last game versus Utah State, a career-long and also longest ever play from scrimmage, running play from scrimmage there for Boy State, 91-yard run uh, by Taylor Green to seal the game against Utah State. Now, another key player here, and you probably think I was going to mention a running back, but I think that there may be a little bit of a different focus in this game, especially if Halani is showing any kind of lingering effects from the injury that he took in his shoulder region versus Utah State. I think that Boise State is going to need to go to the passing game a little bit in this matchup, and they're going to need someone to step up. Now, Boise State has had a couple wide receivers throughout the year step up in different games. You know, you had... Billy Bowen step up in some, you've had Cobb step up in some, you've had Capel step up in some, but I think that Boy State's still waiting for that next level breakaway wide receiver and I think they have one on the roster who just because he's young because he's new hasn't necessarily gotten the same looks in the playing time but he has started to carve out a notch for himself on this roster as a deep threat and I'd love to see him carve out and show that he's more of a complete player with some of more of that short and mid passing game as well the player I'm talking about of course is Eric McAllister the incredibly talented freshman 10 receptions but 235 yards three touchdowns he had two touchdowns last week versus Utah State. I don't think that he's dropped a pass yet. He's had some very difficult catches, and he has breakaway speed. I think he's very, very smart in the way that he runs his routes. I would love to see him get more involved in the short and mid-range passing game as well. I think that this is, you know, when you start talking about the legacy of Boise State wide receivers, of course, they have had some incredible ones throughout the years. I think that this is one of those players that you look at as he could be that next Titus Young. You know, he could be that next Hightower. He, you know, we could go through the whole list of every Boise State wide receiver, but I think this is a player who has that capability and that potential. And as a true freshman, what he's doing, I was so hyped up on him from what I saw in the spring game and what I've seen this season has not in any way doused that hype. I am more hyped on him now that I was at the beginning of the year. I think he has a role for himself in this offense that deserves more than the three or less catches he's getting per game. I think he needs to be targeted a little bit more and not just as a deep threat. I think he has something to offer as well. And then the final key player for me in this one is going to be a defensive player and it's going to be Jail Skinner. I know he's a key player last game, but then ends up getting taken out versus Utah State because of a very, very bad targeting call. So on senior night, early in the game, he gets taken out. You know, I mean, he's, you, you know from his reaction, you know from what people in, close to him have said, he is 1,000% dialed in on this one. Mountain West Championship game, he gets another shot to play on the blue, and this is one he wants to make count. I think maybe getting taken out versus Utah State might have been the best thing possible here um, because it prevented him from being part of that long injury list that ended up having versus Utah State. And he is going to be coming in with, he already comes into every game with 100% plus energy. He's going to be hitting this game like a missile fired out the gate. He is ready to play in this one. He's healthy. He's 100%. And like I said, he is full of energy and ready to go in this one. So, of course, you never want to see a player taken out by a silly penalty like that on senior night. The fact that he got through the game unscathed and is coming into this one with motivation out the window, ready to play, is going to be a very dangerous setup against Fresno State. Fresno State definitely going to want to know where he is on the field and watch out because he is going to be motivated to make an impact and a difference in this game. He is probably, when you talk about these three guys, he is the guy that I think has the most potential to make the biggest impact in this matchup. Now, Fresno State, Jake Hayner, that's the guy that we're talking about. Difference maker for Fresno State who wasn't part of, Bo of the uh, game versus Boise State earlier this season, taking, of course, like we said, with injury versus Oregon State. He has ended up on as the first team quarterback for the Mountain West. I think that's well-deserved. I think there were some questionable decisions. We'll talk about one of those in a second here. But I do think that Jake Hayner deserved that. I think he's the best quarterback in the Mountain West. Uh, I'm not going to say by far because there are some great quarterbacks in this conference, but I think that he's definitely the best one. 
and he is the best quarterback that Boise State will have faced this season. 2,432 yards passing, 73.5 uh, 73.5% completion percentage there. And then he's thrown 17 touchdowns to only three picks. He has had 300 yards passing in every game except for Wyoming since he came back on the field. So four out of the five games that he has played, he's had 300 plus yards passing in every single game. He is a difference maker. He is what scares me the most about this Fresno State team. He has been their offense the last couple of years and definitely this season for sure. When he was not on the field, Fresno State was a completely different team. When he is healthy, when he is 100%, he is a guy who can take over a game, one of the best quarterbacks Boy State has faced this year. Now, a questionable decision here, and a good player and a key player, but running back Jordan Mims getting the first team nod over Halani, that is absolutely insane. Halani has been a player who has been consistent throughout the whole year and taken over games and helped. I mean, if you look at one player who has been the most consistent and managed to get Boise State to the level of success that they enjoy right now, you know, obviously, Taylor Green has been so important to that, but he has relied a lot on George Halani having an absolutely incredible breakout thousand plus yard rushing season. Mims, when Hayner went out, he was not the same player. I mean, he, Boise State really held him in check, 61 yards rushing when they met last time. Fresno State was not able to run purely on Mims. They were able to use and lean on George Halani's legs and use him to get them two wins. There is no way that Mims should be put over Halani. Now, rant aside, he is an amazing running back, 1,078 yards rushing, 14 touchdowns. You know, he's had 500 yard games this season, but not versus Boise State, that was a 61-yard game. So Boise State, if they can shut him down, that's going to be a big key factor for the Boise State Broncos. But Jordan Mims, when you have the dangerous combo of the both of them, Mims is not a player who can carry a team by himself. But when you combine him with Jake Hayner, the most dangerous quarterback in the Mountain West, with a very capable, good running back in Mims, that is a very scary combination that Boise State defense is going to have a headache trying to stop in this matchup. And then the last player here is going to be wide receiver Jalen uh, Cropper. 991 yards receiving, five touchdowns. Now, coming into the Boise State game, coming into Jake Hayner coming back, you know, the back half of the season, he wasn't having an amazing year. You know, he had uh, most yards he'd had in the game was 83 yards. Uh, Boise State, he only had 23. But in the back half of the season, he has absolutely exploded, especially since Jake Hayner's come back. He's had three 100-plus yard receiving games, and he has become a primary target here for Jake Hayner, especially in the deep ball, which has been something Boise State has struggled to defend against, which we'll talk about here in a second. So he is going to be a major playmaker. When you talk about this tri this uh, trio here that Boise State has to try to stop on offense, it gets very, very scary. Fresno State is going to have a field day if Boise State's defense cannot find some ways to shut down some of these key players. All right, keys to the game. Number one here for Boise State, keys to the game is going to be run with what works. I want, you know, Boise State should come out with a run-based offense. That's what has built them success all year long. But if you start seeing success in other phases of the game, if you start seeing success in the passing game, stick with it. You know, Boise State versus Utah State last week, they came out with a run, great. They went to the passing game and they had an instant success. I mean, they had a string of touchdowns there. I mean, they were throwing all the ball. Utah State could not stop them. And then Boise State handicapped themselves, went back to the running game, basically took the passing game out and were stopped several times and really lost that momentum. When they tried to go back to the passing game later on, it just wasn't there. If you're catching fire, stick with it. Boise State's had the same issue with the running game where they've been, you know, gashing the defense on the run and then they start throwing the ball because they feel like they've got to mix it up, give the defense something different to look at and they start throwing the ball and then they their drive sputters out. You know, if you're gashing them on the run, stick with the run. If you, if you switch to the pass and you're having success with the passing game stick with the passing game until they show that they can stop it you don't have to keep presenting a balanced format because honestly with this team this is a really weird boy state team they don't necessarily play well with a balanced format you know it's kind of one of those teams that plays really well when you're giving them one or the other give the defense something where you could overload and overpower them i'm not saying if you're at the passing game you never run it or if you're running it you never pass it but if you're having success in the passing game don't go away from that and if you're gashing them on the running game you know, keep running it until they prove that they can you they can stop you so I do want Boise State to come out with a run-based focus. I want them to keep Fresno State's offense off the field as long as they can. Keep this defense a depleted defense uh, with the injuries that have piled up. Keep this defense fresh as long as possible. But if you start seeing success in the passing game, stick with it. The point here is whatever you're having success with, don't change it situationally. You know, if you ran the whole drive down to the 20 with run plays, don't suddenly start passing it once you get inside the 20 um, or just doing this straight-ahead runs up the middle and then you stall out in the end zone. Stay consistent. 
keep the focus and the pressure up. And if you have started having success, catch hold of that, use that momentum for your benefit. Key number two here is be more creative with Green's legs. You know, right now it's pretty much just quarterback draw or quarterback off the option, left or right, and he just runs left or he runs right. That's pretty much all we've seen out of Taylor Green this whole year. You know, he looks down, he sees if if the uh, DN or the linebacker or whoever's on him is going to be coming down on him and he hands off the running back or he comes around the outside. And teams have really keyed in on that. So Boise State's got to start using his legs still. you got to keep using his legs in the running game, but they got to start u- finding ways to use them more effectively, giving the defense something different to look at, especially if Halani is not 100% in this one. Genty, incredible run running back, but for whatever reason, he just hasn't been quite as effective when he's been the only back out there. So Boise State's got to find a way to use Taylor Green, one of their best runners in the running game. He's a big guy. You know, you don't want to just have him out there taking hits, you know, from a safety coming downhill. Uh, But you can find ways to use him more in the running game. You know, maybe some draw plays where he steps back and then he runs up the middle. You know, or maybe you have some options where he runs the outside more of an RPO. So if they do catch up, if they do have that run locked out, he is someone that he can sling it to. Maybe a tight end coming around on drag or a running back or, you know, wide receiver running a a hook route or something like that. Something short that he can dump the pass off to if the defense keys in, punish them for defending the run there, and then maybe open it up for runs later and I'd love to see more scrambles out of him we know we haven't seen a lot of scrambles we've seen scrambles where he is looking to pass which is awesome Um, but I think we could also see some runs off of these scrambles especially if Fresno State starts locking down some of these passing uh, passing options for Boise State so just being more creative with Green's legs using him as an effective part of the running game and not just as a okay we're going to run a one-off option here which Fresno State is other teams have keyed in on I'm sure Fresno State with the level of coaching they have will have keyed in on as well you need to have Taylor Green as an effective part of your running game. And if Fresno State's cutting off the way that you're running him, you just got to be more creative with it. Dirk Cutter, amazing offensive coordinator. He can get this done if he's making it a priority and a focus. Definitely finding a way to get Green's legs more involved in the game and in the right way. Uh, third key here is commit to the blitz. All right, we've talked about it. Boise State secondary, very porous against the deep ball. And now they're starting to give up the passes in the short mid-range as well. I mean, Utah State had pretty much whatever they wanted, especially in that second half. Deep pass was open to them. Mid-range short pass was open to them. Part of that might be due to players being out. Like I said, J.L. Skinner taken out in the first half. And Boise State had some injuries that they've been dealing with. But even some of these corners that Boise State has have been giving up plays all season long. I mean, I'm not going to call out specific names because I think it's been kind of a group effort of different players giving up different deep passes or bad plays at different times. But it has definitely been an issue for Boise State all season long. So, Boise State, in this game, they need to commit to the blitz. Their secondary is not going to be able to cover the wide receivers that Fresno State has available with the quarterback, the caliber of quarterback that Fresno State has. The way you take away that threat, you reduce his time in the pocket, you get him flushed, you get him taking hits. When Boise State beat Fresno State last year, it was because they came all out blitz. It was really the first time you'd seen Boise State go with that kind of aggressive pressure. They hadn't been great at getting at the quarterback all season long, and they did it versus Fresno State because it was a very focused, definitive game plan to go after and make Jake Hayner uncomfortable. Obviously, you still have to be aware of the running threat because Mims is an amazing running back. But a lot of times, if you're coming with the blitz, that also helps take care of the running game as well. Boise State's secondary statistically is one of the best in the country, but that's because they haven't really been challenged all season. When they have faced competent quarterbacks, they have been gashed. Oregon State, 292 yards, BYU, 377, and Utah State, 306, and this is the best quarterback they've faced all year. So Boise State's got to use its strength, which honestly has been their D-line and their linebacker core, even though the D-line took some injuries last week. It's a very, very deep D-line with a lot of options there. So Boise State needs to use those to their advantage, draw up some plays where they're overloading. Don't just send three or four guys, maybe send a, a secondary player or a linebacker. Regardless of you reaching in your bench and finding some guys that you think have the talent to get to the quarterback, Boise State needs to be sending that blitz, sending that pressure, after the quarterback all day long not going away from it not just doing it occasionally you know versus BYU Boise State had great success when they came with the blitz but they didn't call it very often they weren't putting a lot of pressure on the BYU quarterback and then they were backing off of it and trying to play coverage and every time they did that they got gashed Boise State has to be consistent commit to the fact that you're not going to be able to cover this, these wide receivers for very long make Hayner uncomfortable force some turnovers force some sacks force them into long uh, yardage situations and that's where you're going to have success in this game uh, so three keys run with what works start off with the run but if the passing game starts having success stick with it don't handicap yourself or kill your own momentum run with what works be more creative with green's legs and commit to the blitz all right summarizing for this one 
which boy state team takes the field you know literally which boy state team takes the field because we've had so many injuries who's back for this one who's 100 percent? who is able to play this is not a game where you want to be coming in 85 90 percent this is a game where you're going to need every single player you've got to beat a very good very hungry fresno state team returning to this uh, mountain west championship game so Avalos has never lost to a Fresno State team as head coach or as a player. So you know he's going to be dialed in. To, they've already beat Fresno State once. You know, it's going to be a different Fresno State team, but he's beaten Fresno State every time that he's played them where he's had major control of the game. So he's going to be focused and ready to win. But on the other hand, this is also a Fresno State team that wants to complete their season with that turnaround. Get that win versus Boise State. And with Hayner, I think... Actually, with Hayner, they are the better team. I am really shocked to see that Boise State is favored by as much as they are percentage-wise by ESPN and as much as they are by Vegas. I would have thought Fresno State would be favored in this one. My guess is they're not really paying attention to the factors in this matchup. But Boise State versus Fresno State, you look at a Boise State team that is dealing with some injuries and has an inexperienced quarterback who's gotten better every game. But you also have a Fresno State team that has one of the best quarterbacks in the Mountain West as a good running back and a pairing of some great wide receivers, you know, in a capable defense when they're not having to support the team the whole time without any offense. This is a good Fresno State team. I think that Fresno State statistically has the edge when it comes to their roster. However, this is Boy State at home. This is the last year, uh, you know, to avenge. You know, what I mean by that is they're trying to revenge, avenge last year where they went seven and five, didn't achieve what they want to. This is their chance to show that the last year was a fluke. They've turned things around that this season they've gone undefeated in the Mountain West. They've beaten almost all their rivals except for BYU. This has been a completely different season. They're trying to establish themselves again and once show the country that Boise State is back. So they have last year to avenge and show that this is a different team. They had all offseason. I'm sure that it was echoed around the locker rooms. You know, Go out there and show them what you have. Show them that you are the Boise State teams of the past years. Last year is not reflective of who you are. You've got some very, very hungry uh, players on this team, some hungry seniors. JL Skinner, who's going to be almost definitely his last season here for the Boise State Broncos. So JL Skinner coming in, and he wants to end this season the right way, end it with a win here on the blue before going to bowl season. You've just got so many players dialed in. It's a lot. You you have the momentum of what this year means. You have the fan bases behind Boise State. There's so much energy right now. And I think the biggest factor here is that Dirk Cutter is just the better offensive coordinator. I mean, he is the best offensive coordinator right now. When you talk about experience-wise, I mean, how many NFL head coaches and three-time you know FBS-level head coaches are serving as offensive coordinators right now? I mean, almost none. I mean, I can't think of any. I haven't had anybody else show me anybody else. I'm pretty sure he's the only one who's former NFL head coach and has the length of experience to be right now as an offensive coordinator for a team. He's doing it out of the goodness of his heart to help this team that he loves. He wants to go out the right way. He's only got a couple more games left. He is trying to continue to build and promote this team. I think he's the best coordinator, offensive coordinator in the game of football right now when you talk about his depth of experience that he brings and he is going to be prepared for this matchup. So even though it's a little bit of a David versus Goliath, because I really do think that Fresno State is is well prepared and a strongly talented team that maybe overmatches Boise State a little bit, I do think Boise State's going to get this win. I caught a little bit of flack last season when I said a similar thing. I said a similar thing. I said Fresno State is the better team. Boise State hasn't had the same season that they have, but Boise State can come out and get this win because they're going to be the more motivated team. I think the same thing happens in this matchup. Boise State, they're playing at home. They have some great coordinators on this team to get them that win. They have some great playmakers. And Boise State, it's you just feel the momentum and the energy. You just feel like this is right for Boise State right now. From what has happened this year, the, the fairy tale ending, the storylines that have happened this year for Boise State, this is just the way that it works. This is how you feel that it's going to end. And I really do think when you look at what these teams bring to the table, if Boise State has a healthy Halani, if they are able to return some of these key playmakers on defense and they're able to come in with the right game plan, I think that they will be able to come in here and get this win. I'm predicting Boise State wins this one 37 to 28. I think it's going to be a very offensive focused matchup. Friends State having some opportunities, but Boise State staying locked in, keyed in, maybe a little bit of a different offense, maybe that we've seen all year. Dirk Cutter pulling out all the stops for this matchup. The, la the game versus Utah State where Boise State could have coasted, it showed that they were dialed in and focused. They played a full, normal offensive game, You know, even sacrificing some of their key playmakers to go in and get that win because they wanted to make sure that they were 
not at all rusty, not at all out of sync, that they had ironed out every single issue before they came in to play Fresno State. They do have some issues they got to work out from that game, but the point is that they are ready to go, and they've probably been preparing for this game for several weeks, even before that Utah State matchup. So, Boise State versus Fresno State, predicting a win here by Boise State. Incredibly excited for this game. Let me know what you think in the description, in the comments here. Let me know who you think is going to win this game. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you use the link in the description to go buy yourself some Bronco Blameyer gear. And uh, as always, go Big Blue!